Rich, Tennessee Homestead. How in the heck are you today? Yeah, sorry, I've been out doing a little running around. Uh, just got back from up in Michigan. Yeah, a lot of fun. Went to a big wedding and stuff up there. Uh, Want to talk to you a little bit about some of the some of the things I've been following. I, I'm amazed at the amount of propaganda that's coming out. Uh, you have to spend so much time out there researching this to get to the real root of the problem. And I'm going to put you some links for some channels you can go take a look at that are pretty straight up. We're being lied to, and that's that's where I have my problem. If we can't count on our government to tell us the truth, that's going to present a big problem. And they are not telling us the truth. Why are we there? Why are we putting all this money into the Ukraine? Because we love them so much? I can guarantee that's not the case. Have we started down a slope that we might not pull back from? That concerns me. You hear our government and our media trying to tell you, oh, the world's behind us, so Putin's isolated. No, the world is not behind us. Matter of fact, most of the world is now taking a step back and looking at America and are going, you know, we've had enough of us. The world is beginning to say they've had enough of us. Putin's economy is doing okay with all these sanctions. We shortly are going to find out how much harm it's done us. The world is not having a problem at all switching away from the dollar. Because now, what used to be a trusted system, the SWIFT systems, things of this nature with the U.S. dollar, the world is beginning to see that these politicians will destroy, try to destroy a country's economy using the very tools that they see as the trustworthy vehicles for dealing in dollars. Folks, when that petrodollar goes down, every economist in this country will tell you, we have some big, big problems. Problems that we'll probably never recover from because the world isn't going to go back to it. India had bought some oil from Russia. Now, Europe is buying oil. We're still buying oil from Russia. But India bought oil from Russia. Well, guess who's no longer in our corner? They signed a pact on with Russia, China, and themselves. So Russia and China just gained India as an ally. Not a good thing. That's a big chunk of population and a big chunk of the world over there. And now they're basically looking at the U.S. as being warmongers, unreliable, untrustworthy, and extremely dishonest. See, their reporters are over in the Ukraine. They know what's going on. They go, what? Well, Western media can't seem to keep from lying. And if we disagree with what you saw over there, or you took pictures of the wrong area over there, we're going to ban you. Your information is not going to be available to the West. NATO is something that you all really need to start looking at hard. Every time we've had a war, when we were attacked in 9-11 and went after Afghanistan, we had a handful of ally support. A handful of ally support. NATO didn't come rushing over there with all their troops and weapons and so forth to help us in, in Afghanistan, did they? There was a few. Not much. Right now, we have been having to send up send all kinds of troops to Europe to bolster their military power so that they hope Russia doesn't come pouring across their border at your expense. We have, by the best I've been able to track, because they're being very sneaky about, oh, we thought it sent, you know, 50 billion here, we sent 10 million here, and we spent, you know, and they're trying to shuffle this stuff around, but the best I've been able to keep track, we are on track for like a um, trillion, two, something like that. It's a lot of money, folks. It's going to add, as I said in other videos, it's going to add to inflation, which is going to add to what interest rates have to go to to get the inflation under control. And our economy is going to be hit with things pretty soon because of the slowdowns, because of the inflation, because of the interest rates, we're going to slow down our job economies too. I'm sorry, Democrats just can't get it under control. So we're losing our status in the world. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, please, please, Democrats, keep their butts in Washington, D.C. They're making absolute fools out of the Americans. Australians sit over there and laugh on a regular basis. I'll attach a few of their funnier commentaries. They look at them as buffoons. That's your leadership. Why we're in Ukraine is beyond belief. If it wasn't for the high-tech military equipment we're pumping into there, Ukraine wouldn't have lasted a week. They are Nazis in the Ukraine, or at least sympathize with the Nazis that are there. There are numerous divisions, we've went over this, of Nazis in the military. 
Are they exterminating people in the eastern Ukraine? Yes, they are. For eight years, they've been killing civilians in the eastern Ukraine. Why? Because they speak Russian. They're Russians. We want to kill them. You see, the Ukrainians declared war on the Russians back in 2013. Seriously. Also, you want to go out and look at, uh, and just do a, do a, a YouTube search for the Crimea Republic uh, elections of 2014. You'll get to hear people, because they were at the polling stations, and hear people coming out of after voting and what they had to say about it. I can't play it here and put it up on YouTube. There was too many, <laughs> let's go Ukraines in there, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Ukraine. That was the people's attitude in that region, and that referendum passed. Crimea was an independent country at one time. Ukraine just kind of assumed them in. Well, Crimea said, we want to know more of you. You don't like us. We don't like you. Time for us to part company. So it's not like the Russians went in there and wrestled the Crimeans to the ground and said, you're going to become part of Russia. That's not what is going on there, folks. The people of Donbass aren't afraid of the Russians. That's why they want to go to them. They have family in Russia. They're Russians. But they were part of the Soviet Union, and they built their lives in Ukraine. And we're happy to be Ukrainians up to the point of these, for the past, since 2013, when their government turned on them and wanted to get rid of them. Being Russians, they kind of stood their ground. I said, no, this is where we live. You don't like us? Stay out. And they've been fighting there for years. Wake up, America. Your tax dollars are being spent over fighting a war that nobody wants. Russia didn't want. They didn't. We've been supplying Ukraine with weapons for the longest time, since around 2010, building them up so that we could fight a proxy war with Russia. Well, let me tell you something. We did that in, in Afghanistan to the Russians, too. We sent all our high tech tech weaponry over there. Not many years later, that same weaponry was being used on our troops when we had to go in there. Think on that one a minute. Will someday these Nazis that we're supplying with these high-tech weapons turn around and use them on Europe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, wouldn't hesitate. See, they, want, they are definitely want to spread the Aryan race <laughs> all over the world. Yeah. Zig Heil. They're serious. And there's a lot of them. And we've armed them up, equipped them. They've got boxes and boxes and boxes of missiles sitting around. Yeah. And the Ukrainians, they like to kind of keep them out of the limelight. But they're there. And they're there in great numbers. Matter of fact, they are Ukraine's fighting force. So we are basically backing a Nazi regime in Ukraine. Zelensky is very much answerable to these guys. We need to wake up. But the biggest thing is, is it has caused the world to w wake up. And they've looked at us and they said, you are not and have no business being a superpower anymore. Look what you have done in the world. With the atrocities that we have committed all over this world, folks, atrocities, war crimes, we have no business to point our fingers at anybody. The only difference is, is we were always the big kids on the block, so nobody accused us of being like that, although they have. I mean, I don't know if you know, we've got a couple of presidents who have been declared war criminals by the UN for the things we've done. Here again, we maintain troops all over the world without maintaining a declaration of war to happen there. Violation of your constitution, here again. That is something that could change. And the world would appreciate it if we change it. We are known as warmongers. Europe didn't want this war with Ukraine. Not really. It is screwing up their economy over there. At the same time, you have that little organization called NATO, which they haven't been paying their money into, their fair share into. We have been picking up the tab. Right now, we have 100,000 troops plus all over Europe protecting their butts right now. We're paying to send them over there. We're paying to keep 50,000 of them there. We keep on a, a standard basis. We lease bases for billions of dollars each year. Our troops are spending their money over there helping European economies, and we are supplying the Europeans with weapons. Makes sense, huh? And Germany, you know, they, they explained it to us. 
You know, if we if we put all that money in the defense, we couldn't have our high paying early retirement and our social security and you know and our free health care. We can't afford that. So we let you supply the defense for Europe. That's the attitude of most European countries. Poland, oh, we got these old beat up 1990 MiGs we'll send to Ukraine, but you go out and buy us brand new F-15s, we is Good deal if you got it. I'm hoping the government was smarter than that. Wake up, America, because let me tell you something. There's not a cotton-picking one of us that are alive here that didn't know the U.S. is anything but a superpower. You're going to find out, and your children are going to grow up in a, in a world that we are no longer a superpower. We are about to get smacked to our knees. Understand, the Red Chinese are getting ready to build a, a port and some bases and so forth in the Solomon Islands. We jumped up and, oh, no, you're not. Like, they're afraid of us. I said, yeah, we are. <laughs> not simple. Yes, we are. We told you don't build those little islands out there and turn them into military bases out in the middle of the China Sea. What did Red China tell them? They don't care. You don't run us, kids. We own you. Now, between the alliance of Russia, Red China, and now India, they're pretty much going to tell us, listen, children, get back over there. Shut up. Sit down. Because let me tell you something. Not even NATO would want to tangle with those three countries. Why? Because Europeans, they don't like getting their butts whipped. Europe's not going to put up with this Ukraine thing much longer anyway, because now it's really beginning to affect their oil flow. And guess what? These countries like Iran and, um, you know, even Venezuela here in the Americas, uh, you know, Saudi Arabians, they're not even talking to us. They're not going to give us any more oil. They don't care if Europe dries up and blows away. That's the way the world's looking at us. I'm reading this opinion pieces from all assorted countries, and it's sad. Africa hates us. Absolutely hates us for the stuff we pull over there. It's time we went back to the country that our founding fathers gave us, America. A country that is friendly to all nations. Yeah, that includes Russia and Red China and India. Be smart about it. Look out for our best interests. See if we're not wanting to play in everybody else's games. We concentrate on our country, our jobs, our people, not the world's. And if we can do business with your country and it's good for us and it's good for you, let's do that. Otherwise, we'll be friendly with you. We'll help you out if we can. And sooner or later, we'll have be able to do trade. Be friends with all nations is what our founding fathers wanted us to do. Trade with other nations is what our founding fathers wanted us to do. And don't be a warring nation, something we lost track of a long, long time ago. Our warmongering is going to destroy our country. It's up to you as an American. Step back. Educate yourself. Know what's going on all over the world. And how do they feel about us? Some little Congo country in Africa isn't going to have much of a bearing on us. But if they hate us, we need to find out what we're doing wrong that makes them hate our country. Russia it could have been a good friend to America if we would have treated Russia like a friend once the Soviet Union folded up. They wanted to become part of the European continent. They wanted to even join NATO. What did we tell them? Go straight to hell and stay there. Because our military pe uh, contractors need you. We need that boogeyman. Red China wasn't quite up to snuff yet. So that we keep, ha we got an enemy. We can constantly build new missiles and planes and high-tech stuff. You do know the Russians are quitting the space station. We're going to have to hitch a ride with somebody else. Maybe Elon Musk will give our astronauts a ride to the, to the space station. Countries are turning their backs on us. Most countries are ignoring the sanctions that Joe's put out there. He's just made himself look, once again, like a feeble old fool. And for what? Because we didn't like the orange man's tweets. <laughs> Good God, at least we had an economy. We had businesses coming back. And we didn't go to war at any point in time. Keep this in mind. You were told, Democrats. Donald Trump got us into zero wars in four years. 
and was setting up to end the ones we had. That senile old fart that one, I'm assuming there, there was 81 million Democrat people voted for this guy. At least that's the number of ballots they counted. Thought that this was a real good idea. He absolutely screwed us up in Afghanistan, left billions of dollars worth of military equipment sitting over there. See, he could have packed that stuff up and sent it to the Ukraine. They'd have loved it. We didn't. We left it for our other enemy. And then we've been pouring billions of dollars into the Ukraine. Proxy war. And I'll almost bet you if he's in there for four years, we'll be in a regular war. Because the world's fed up with us. I just pray to God that it doesn't go nuclear. We need to wake up. We need to get this government under control, not just because of Joe Biden, but because this government needs to be put into the strict confines of the United States Constitution. And any jurist going back into the Supreme Court will be told, you will throw those books away, kids, and you will rule by what is written in that Constitution. And if it is not a federal authority written and given to it by the U.S. Constitution, it does not exist. And you judge your laws accordingly. This is Rich Jesse Homestead. I love you guys. I appreciate you. But you're going to have to wake up. Your children is not going to be living in a superpower. And you got a world out there that really doesn't like us. That's because we're being foolish. And selfish. And it's not the people of this country. I know the people of this country are pretty good folks. Some brighter than others, but pretty good folks. It's our government. But they're doing this stuff in your name. These people that are dying over in the Ukraine because of this proxy war, they're probably pretty good folks too. Even they got Russians on one side and the Nazis on the other going at it. And we're putting the foot in the bill and keeping it going. May God help us. Love you guys. Appreciate you. This is Scott Long. Talk to you soon.